All right, guys, so today we're going to be reacting to 10 insane weapons invented by the German army. Uh, this is going to be part of the series of Germans' uh, greatest inventions, so uh, Germans' weapons invented during the World War II. I'm very, uh, I'm very interested in this kind of topic. I just love it, you know, since uh, I was a little kid. My father always talk, uh, talked about the Second World War. That he used to just spend nights just watching history channel and you know about the the second world war i remember sitting down in the living room with him and just watching while eating some sea flowers sunflowers at the same time after the ball game i'm very i'm very glad that i'm following him to his footsteps and just you know enjoying the the greatest things of history uh, yeah and you know, regardless of the the outcome, whether it was good or bad, it doesn't matter for me. The important thing is that we learn from the history, and we learn from it, whether it's good or bad. Make sure you like and subscribe, and thank you so much for the support. In the meantime, let's jump in. Let's go. War machine. With the extensive use of the Blitzkrieg war strategy, the Nazis managed to conquer a huge part of Europe with a minimum loss of manpower but they were able to do this because of their advanced weaponry. Many of their weapons were later adopted and developed by other countries, but luckily for us, the Allied forces were able to crush the Nazi army before some of these inventions were able to see the light of day so in battle. Of time, basically. Here are 10 weapons invented by the Nazis. Oh, Stay picture, tuned bro. to number one to find out which one could have single-handedly changed the course of World War II. I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below. You Number guys 10, support the Horton 229. The Horton 229 became oh, famous as the that. first stealth bomber ever. The prototype for this Nazi weapon was created by Hermann Göring, wow. who wanted to make a lighter aircraft I thought powered we saw that purely when by jet engines. In, we saw that in one of the past videos, but they didn't talk about it too much. Goring had the famous 3x1000 plan, an aircraft that would carry 1,000 yeah. kilograms of bombs, travel 1,000 kilometers per hour, and to reach the distance of 1,000 kilometers. Horton 229 was allegedly equipped with stealth technology. It had a sleek design, and apparently it was very hard to detect via radar. Huh, the initial test proved very successful, but there were some problems that the Germans needed to fix. They spent the entire year of 1944 to come up with a better design and operational features for this aircraft. When a model took off in February 1945, disaster struck. One of the jet engines caught fire and just stopped working. The pilot initially survived the crash, but died a couple of weeks later due to his injuries. Wow. At this point, the Nazi forces yeah, were oh working. Oh my God, look, look at that. You can only just admire. That's all you can do against the clock because the allies were closing in on them and they didn't have enough time to further develop the Horton aircraft. However, they continued working on it until the allied forces <laughs> were able to confiscate it. It finally landed in the hands of the US armed forces who used it in developmental research for their own stealth aircraft. Yes, we did. Number nine, Zilgerit 1229. This military device, which is also known as the Vampire Scope, was an infrared attachment for the that's Sturm nine, that's the rear assault rifle. The main purpose for this yep. device was to be used during the night when visibility is very low. With it attached to their assault rifle, German soldiers were practically able to see in the dark. Considering the time wow. it was created, this is one of the most advanced pieces of military equipment wow. ever invented. The Vampire night vision was first used pretty late in the war in the winter of 1945. There were some experiments a couple of months prior to this, but it wasn't anything serious. When it was introduced full time, 310 German units received this device. If it had been introduced some time earlier, it might have had more of an impact on German military success yeah. because it enabled a soldier to move around and shoot in pitch dark places, such as caves, but also in forests and mountain ranges with or without the moonlight. However, because it came into being in the early days of 1945, it was <coughs> luckily too late for any type of mass production. Nevertheless, the device definitely worked well. Number eight, Kugelblitz. 
Kugelblitz, or Ball Lightning as it could be translated, was an anti-aircraft gun with a rotating turret. By 1943, it was clear to the German commanders that they had to come up with an effective anti-aircraft weapon. The reason was simple. By that time, the German Air Force simply didn't have enough power to stand against the increasing attacks of the Allied bombers. The Allies were gaining supremacy in the air, and the yeah, only way to fight them was from the ground. Thus, the Germans started building several types of self-propelled guns for anti-aircraft warfare, yeah. which could be mounted on a Panzer IV chassis. That is how the Kugelblitz came into being. It had the basic structure of the Panzer IV tank, the chassis was the same, and the turret was mounted on it. A highly effective aspect of the Kugelblitz so is that it could it go... So basically it can move much quicker, right? By moving at the same time. So it can just rotate in a more flexible way. Around its axis, 360 degrees. Like Again, the problems with, with frequent these. allied attacks combined with the need to defend on several fronts prevented the Germans from placing the Kugelblitz into mass production. There were only five prototypes, and allegedly, they were all used in the battle for Berlin. Huh. Number seven, Fallschirmjäger. Fallschirmjäger, or parachute hunter, is the name of the German paratroopers. Although the idea for using paratroopers didn't originally come from Germans, they are responsible for introducing them into combat. This is because the German paratroopers were the first such military units to be used in airborne operations on a large scale. They were very effective, so much so that the Allied soldiers refer to them as the Green Devils. The first airborne units were created in the 1930s ah. at the behest of Hermann Göring, who wanted to include these units into the regular German Air Force. German paratroopers were an important part of the occupation of several yeah, European y countries, including Denmark, Norway, Belgium, <clears throat> Netherlands, and France. But they were also employed by the Italian and Balkan campaigns, as well as on the Eastern Front. They were also known to perform successful raids and covert actions, becoming an integral part of the German army. Number six, Schwer Gustav. This weapon is also We known saw that one in one of the last video, man. That That's still until today, this day, until this day, is one of the most amazing, most, uh, let's say, ambitious creation, in my opinion. As the great Gustav. And it was the biggest cannon ever built, yeah, so but also the biggest man. cannon ever used in combat. This massive weapon was being developed in the late Boom. 1930s, and its main purpose was to destroy the major French fortifications on the famous Maginot Line, and thus weaken the French defenses. The Maginot Line had the strongest defenses at the time, and it was crucial to create a weapon so strong to literally annihilate the Maginot resistance and provide an easy access for German troops. When fully assembled, Great Gustav weighed 1,350 tons and was capable of firing wow, seven ton those. shells up to. Look at those bullets, man. To 30 miles. The original plan was to prepare the cannon for the Battle of France, but they were not able to meet that deadline. The German army decided to go without it, and when they experienced initial success and the Maginot Line collapsed, there was no need to rush things. So, the making of the Gustav was prolonged. It was finally ready for the Siege of Sevastopol in 1942. Gustav proved very useful, but in April 1945, the Nazis decided to destroy it so that it wouldn't fall into the Allied hands. Number 5. Fritz X Fritz X is a German armor-piercing bomb that was precision-guided. It is generally considered to be one of the very first smart bombs in modern warfare. It was designed to be an anti-ship glide bomb and was the first of such to sink a ship in battle. Fritz huh. X was operated on radio command system via joystick, and no it proved way. very effective in combat. Joysticks. This bomb managed to take down several merchant ships, such as the Royal Navy ship Uganda and the US cruiser Savannah. However, it achieved its greatest success by taking down the Italian battleship Roma and damaging the battleship Italia on September 9, 1943, as they were going toward the Allied forces to surrender. The magazines on the Roma exploded and it soon sank, but its sister ship Italia, although badly hit, managed to reach the coast of Tunisia. Wow. 
Wow. Soon after the initial success of Fritz X, though, the Allies begin developing their own electronic countermeasures I to can try imagine. and keep Fritz I can X imagine. at bay. And knowing that you have a there's a missile just running around that it can be, you know, managed from joysticks. <laughs> By the time of the Normandy invasion, the Allies had air supremacy. They were able to block German electronic ordinances, making Fritz X practically useless. Number 4. Flettner F-1-282 The Colibri, or Hummingbird oh. as it was also known, was a single-seat German helicopter. The first mass-produced helicopter that ever. That is insane. This helicopter was that is insane. So they created the helicopter, huh? Actually an improved version of a model the Germans had been working on. Initially, the idea wasn't <clears throat> to use this helicopter in combat. Its primary use was to transport objects from ship to outpost patrols and scouting missions. But as the war moved on, there were thoughts about using the Fi-282 on the battlefield as well. At first, there was only room for one soldier, but the improved B-2 version of the chopper had an additional position at the rear. This version proved highly effective in spotting enemy artillery posts. The helicopter was also excellent when it came to operating in bad weather, which was a signal for the German Air Ministry to go into mass production of this unit. Wow. In 1944, the German command ordered 1,000 units to be manufactured by BMW, whose Munich factory was producing German Army aircraft at the time. The production started, but only 24 helicopters were made because air raids by the Allied forces resulted in destruction of the BMW facilities. Wow, man. Number 3. STG-44 Just imagine. Sturmgewehr 44, or Assault Rifle 44-inch, was the first weapon with a shorter cartridge, which enabled a soldier to control automatic fire, compared to the standard used by infantry soldiers at the time. It was very effective and influential because it ushered in a new era of that's, assault that, that is That's modern warfare. That's, that's 1960s, 1950s kind of... Technology. and automatic weapons. Sturmgewehr 44 is the first assault weapon of that. its kind to be mass produced. It is generally considered one of the most important technical advancements since smokeless powder because really? of its reduction in muzzle impulse. This is also one of the most important military inventions by Nazi Germany, not because its impact on the war, but because of its later influence. Did we, have, the, we have the Thompson? We have Thompsons. Right? So. Operational principles of this assault rifle can be seen in Kalashnikov's AK-47, as well, well as the famous yeah, M6. I, yeah, when you compare it to the AK-47, that's more like a modern um, technology, modern weapon. So that makes sense. 16. Look at that. Number two, <clears throat> Panzer IV. This was one of the most heavily used tanks in the German army. It was a medium tank developed in the 1930s and produced 8,500 <laughs> units. Panzer IV was a reliable piece of military equipment as it was the only tank to be continually produced during the war. It was regularly upgraded and improved. Panzer IV took around 30% of Germany's total tank power. It served on both the Western and Eastern Front as well as in North Africa. Considering all the technical aspects, it is absolutely clear that Panzer IV was the best German tank at the time. On June 6, 1944, at the moment of the Normandy invasion, there were 748 Panzer IV tanks present in the area, and they played a major role in the German resistance against the advancing Allied forces. Number 1. V2 Rocket this could have easily been the weapon to change the course of the war, but luckily the Nazis didn't have enough time on their hands to finish it. The initial development and construction of oh, the V-2 rocket started in the oh 1930s, but the weapon didn't see any battle action before 1942. The whole idea behind constructing the V-2 was to have the ultimate revenge weapon, as the Nazis called it, because they were infuriated by the Allied bombings of German cities. In retaliation, the Germans were planning to use V-2 and cause destruction on a massive scale. On June 20th, 1944, V-2 became the first object ever to travel in space from Earth when it was launched vertically. The V-2 rocket would rise 10 kilometers into the air and then fall down in a curved path at the speed of almost 6,500 kilometers what? per hour, hitting the ground hard and exploding several feet below the surface. It came into use in September 1944 when it was launched against London, Antwerp, and Liège, where it killed several thousand people. 
However, what? as the Allies. How did you not know that? Huh? So they used it. We're advancing towards Berlin. They managed to capture key manufacturing points in Germany, and eventually all the members from the V2 team surrendered. The facilities where the V2 was manufactured went to the Soviets, who moved production to the Soviet Union. And zero to hero, we are definitely glad that the Allied forces won World War II. But that is, uh, wow, that's mm, that is interesting. Wow, that's a lot. Some of those inventions they didn't know about. Whereas that, that's crazy. I'm sorry, it's crazy, man, to think about that. Crazy. Very crazy. I mean, when you start go deep, and and again, I go back to that, like the the time frame between the war, right? It's almost six years, 1939 to 1945. It's not a long, a long time. It's it's enough time. It's enough time to just make destructions commit destruction but it's not enough time to uh, investments of technology but they managed to just somehow man everyone but it, it, it amazed me how germany managed to just make so much so much ingenuity right and the allies still did the same thing they needed to just step up to the uh to the game but then the fact that they were i, I don't know man it, it just it just fascinates me it's the amount of, you know, the ideas were correct when you think about it. Night vision, uh, yeah, the, this one, I forgot this one. This one right here. This one's the most crazy one. The, the steel um, plane, the steel jet plane. I forgot the name, how we call it here. Uh, man, look at that. That's insane. It looks beautiful, bro. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, look at this. It's a little AK-47. It's not an AK-47, but you know, precursor. Look at that. I, I love this one, man. It's intimidating. We talk about the tank. What, what could happen if that big tank that they made will always walk through the cities or the places that they conquered? It'll be GG, bro. I'm telling you. But of course, some of those land would not hold it. They probably lose the tank because some of those places they might not even have very strong structures in the ground let me know what you guys think in the comment section like always thank you so much for your support and i'll see you in the next one i'm out peace